What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I am here with Kasun again. We're talking all about Analyst Builder, how we started it. And this is just a longer series, kind of about how we built it, the challenges, and then the architecture as well. This is the second video in the series. So we're gonna be talking all about the challenges that we had of building and starting a startup. Um, if anyone's out there who's built a startup before, I'm sure you'll recognize a lot of these challenges because we encountered a lot along the way, but we overcame every single one of them and here we are now. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just dive right into it. The first thing, and I think this is something that's really common with startups is if you're not doing it by yourself, the first thing that's really tough is finding the right person to create the startup with because I there's, there were other people who I was talking to about it and I, you know, I could have chosen them, but I think choosing the right person is like one of the more important things uh, when you're doing a startup. Now, this was a challenge, not because I chose the wrong person. <laughs> it was a challenge because there were other people who I could have chosen. So when I was first starting and I was messaging other people, I would get on phone calls with them or they'd email me um, and I would talk with them and, you know, this is a very specific product, very specific project. And um, a lot of people had never heard of, you know, this type of thing. They didn't know what a remote code execution engine was or, you know, maybe they weren't coders. So they don't really understand, um, you know, Python. They just use like JavaScript or their front end or their back end, but they don't really use these tools. And so when I was talking with them and then I talked with you, I would notice that I would chat with them and it would just feel like they didn't really understand what I was trying to do. But then when I would talk with you, it was like, you really understood it, but then you also were excited about it. Yeah. You were like, this is a project that would be super unique to build, which of course gets me excited because I agree it's super unique, but you know, finding someone who had a passion for it as well, I just kind of randomly is hard um, because it wasn't like I knew you before and then I was like, hey, what did you think about building this? I was like reaching out to people. Um, and so for me, that very, very, very beginning step of finding the right person was very tough. Uh, but once I did find you and your team, I was like, okay. I was like, the, you understand what I want. You understand what we're trying to go for. And, you know, we just have to build it and, and you know, do it together. And so finding that person, I think, was definitely a challenge, mostly on my side, uh, because from your side, there aren't gonna be many people who are trying to build this. <laughs> the second biggest thing or the second challenge that we really had was low funding because funding was coming from my side uh, and I was doing consulting. I quit my full-time job to do YouTube and consulting full-time. So I didn't have like a full salary to dedicate to this. And I told you that up front, but uh, that definitely was a challenge. How, how did, how did you guys handle, you know, my lower, but you know, it's not like I had no money, but it was, I had a low budget. And then once it launched, I was like, once we can start bringing in money, I'll, you know, we'll be able to, to have more funding for the projects and the features and everything like that. But how did you think, what did you think about just funding in general for the project? Cause again, it was just me. There was nobody else. Yeah. So I think this was a challenge. Like, uh, like you said, that this is like a highly complicated software. And uh, we actually understood that Alex is like a good person initially. So not anymore, but at the beginning I was a good person. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of trusted him a lot. So it all uh, based on the trust we had. So we knew that he could actually bring this product like, you know, up to like next level uh, with his skill. So we actually also did the gambling there that uh, we know that uh, it's not easy to like, you know, since we were also like a startup and and the thing was that the the most uh, funny part is that we weren't like a big startup. We were like a very small team uh, located in Sri Lanka. And we were also, we didn't have any experience building startups. And this project came uh, actually at the time where our, our startup was at the brink of collapse. So at that time, this project actually rekindled, um, you know, the startup we had to, so we could go forward. And uh, since we loved the product so much that 
this is a uh, this is not something you're gonna do every day <laughs> right this, this, you won't see this kind of project every day in any place mm -hmm. I, i have seen only like a handful of projects like this in my lifetime so building something like that would be something really great that i you know we can be proud of so this is one part so it is not just funding that the people who worked with me also were like very excited about this project like everyone from the designers to the engineers who worked with me they were like really excited like, okay we are building something really cool that we can be really proud of mm -hmm. something like something you you won't see something like this right you won't see so i can guarantee that because that is the spirit which uh, kept us going so it is not only about funding it is also about the passion we had uh, the mutual understanding we had about the product and uh, about alex uh, like there were like a lot of factors there so i think that eventually made uh, us coming to this point launching the platform having a lot of users in like very short amount of time uh so i i think that is uh, the you know the main thing and also uh, while we were like doing the project uh, alex was still having his job while we were like uh, continuing like with maybe six months you suddenly said me hey kasun that i'm going to uh, quit my job and do this full time mm -hmm. then it uh, got into my head really hard <laughs> like he's quitting his job means he's doing like a law like a really big sacrifice right so i was kind uh, i immediately told the team hey guys uh, alex is quitting his job so we need to take this much more seriously from mm -hmm. here because he believes us he believes in us so we had to actually do this we had to nail this down uh, we had to overcome any challenge we have uh, ahead and we should actually do that so i think that that came from the mutual understanding we had like uh, it is not only about funding that the understanding we built uh, across this project timeline and uh, yeah that was one, one moment like I, even i actually got scared <laughs> i know how hard it is to like you know funding your own mm -hmm. uh, for some time it's not not really easy thing to do so i just uh, say that yeah it was like that it was the understanding between yeah. uh, uh you and me and the team and the other people who were around us we we both were centered around it mm -hmm. so i guess that was uh, that was it like uh, it is it takes more than funding to build this yeah well i also think it took because it took a year to build before the beta launch i think part of the funding challenge for us was funding your team to have more senior level people since we had a lower budget we couldn't hire people who already knew every a lot of things about it so i think that was a challenge right yeah it's a challenge for me i guess but uh, i'm i'm really proud of the team mm -hmm. i'm having that uh, they were also like fresh graduates from the universities and um, actually we uh, when we start in the project uh, we had a different name for the our my company uh, uh and uh, at that time we couldn't actually afford people to do full time work because with the resources we had so i started the project with four uh, three other people uh who were uh only like part time with the project for like few months uh, they actually made the base of the project so they were like really smart on doing that uh, so yeah i would uh, mention the names also like uh, first i initiated this call with shirley uh, shirley and i talk discuss about the remote code execution engine and also how we can um, you know design the system uh, the er dragons to like make this platform more dynamic and flexible because uh, this platform is like very flexible even from the pricing point of view it is a very complicated thing where you don't see that like in other places that we have like very complex pricing structure also and also we had a lot of components inside courses that we have to uh, have questions also so this was also a challenge so we had to think about all of these from the beginning mm -hmm. so 
uh, Shirley and I initiated this uh, project and also from the engineering side, I'm saying, and also Sudam and Rukshan joined um, with us to build the initial prototype. So the first thing we did was building the remote code execution engine. So this is the thing we built first. We built the core. Um, like I, I told Alex that whatever we do depends on this. Mm -hmm. So we need to first nail this down and see whether it works really well. So we actually did that. Uh, it was working really fine at that time. So it, you could just uh, use data sets and execute codes. So this was like a basic prototype we were working. And after that, we got, uh, you know, some resources to like work with us full time. So Jaimini joined the team. So she's now uh, heading the back end team uh, in the company. Uh, so we were starting like uh, now, uh, now since that, uh, you know, that the part time thing wasn't working really well because they had other commitments to do. So we couldn't, you know, get the work done on time sometimes. Uh, so when we switched from the part-time people to the full-time, uh, we saw like a huge boost there, like they could like focus on that. But uh, then uh, Iso joined the team who was working on the front-end side. And then uh, we got other people, Kweshan, Prabhash uh, joining the team and Nimesha at the end uh, on the QA side. So these people worked together in this project uh, to know do everything like uh, from uh, from the engineering perspective to design perspective or um, yeah i forgot to mention that manet and their team at octrave they designed the website um, they designed the graphics you see this cool logo this animation <laughs> everything yeah by themselves no any other you know help at all they just built themselves so they also did like a really great help like helping us uh, to like build this platform, it, it wasn't like uh, it was like a, actually a teamwork. So, and also I, I need to mention Satyanga, who is a co-founder of our company, who also helped massively on the design side. He has a good eye, better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like helping us from the beginning, and Kushan also. Uh, he was also helping uh, directing us in uh, the you know the right path when we are doing. Uh, this uh, thing with the whole team so and uh, yeah it was like a team effort i guess uh, like every person who worked uh, with us uh, had sacrificed a lot of, the, of their time um, i mean uh, and the other thing you mentioned that we couldn't have out senior people yeah that's uh, uh, i think uh, maybe that was good because um, i could teach people to do certain things in certain ways so I felt like when they joined the project they were in, in some level and working with this project since it is very complicated on every aspect mm -hmm. uh, from the back end side to the front end everything uh, to the deployments so they learned a lot right like it was like a really great learning curve for um for them because they actually built it because mm -hmm. i was mainly instructing them like you need to do something like this and not this and they were with some time they understood okay this is what we need to do right. so that makes me also very happy to see in their level like uh, their skills have gone up for sure uh, mm -hmm. from where they were like a year ago so it makes me also really happy that uh, the people could go with the project right so now, um, now actually, uh, I can assign them a task and they can do it confidently because they went through this. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I wouldn't say that it was very hard to, uh, it wasn't very easy to work with me. Uh, <laughs> Alex uh, knows me like how I do stuff. Uh, and um, the, the other thing that I want to mention that uh, is that we were not just doing a project that like, even the functionality works we were also caring about the quality, mm -hmm. quality of the code and everything. Even even if you have like extra space or something like that, we also care about that. Yeah, We had to be very consistent since the project is very huge. So we were like enforcing a lot of these things from the start. So it's a very annoying thing. Yeah, well, you know, I think, I think what I really liked what you said was, you know, they weren't senior, 
but as you go through, they're learning so much that they're probably, you know, they're working on something that is much more complicated than other projects. So you get, you learn an immense amount of things in the startup, which is kind of um, a bonus of a startup. Like if you're thinking about joining a startup, the bonus is, is you have to learn so many things so quickly, you're going to learn really fast, right? And so I've noticed that as well, like as we've gone along, you know, it's, we've done, it's a year and a half now, it's after like a year at everything was like, they knew what to do. When I said, hey, this is what we'd want to add, they already knew what to do. So it's not, um, it doesn't take as long as it used to because now we, they understand the code base, they understand the systems that we're using, how everything connects. And so now they are, I would say, experts for our project, right? Yes, yes, They're exactly. definitely experts. Yeah, because um, the thing is that uh, I wasn't doing much of coding. I, I was uh, focusing on mainly the architecture side and the guiding the team. And actually, the team takes the credit for developing this. So, you know that I, uh, since uh, in my startup, I had also focused on other projects also. So I didn't have much time to like do coding. Mm-hmm. You know, but on a special occasion, I had to code uh, some critical component or something like that. I had to step in. But most of the time, I let the team to do work mm-hmm. so they can learn. And uh, with this experience, they can grow. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to give them also, like to, you know, to learn new things, understand the concepts. And, you know, it's a, it, this project, it covers a huge area of computer science. Mm-hmm. So you don't get to work in a project like this in any other way. So it's a very niche one. Yeah. So they should get the advantage of doing that themselves mm-hmm. uh, by their own. Yeah. So that is, I think, uh, one of the best things happened to them because uh, uh, if you are watching this, I, I think you know, <laughs> know what I'm talking about, like how we started and how you, you know, you, every, everyone grows with the project. And I hope it will keep continuing uh, yeah. to the future. Like they will grow very much uh, doing this project. So, yeah, so I think maybe that was a blessing. Yeah, I mean, you every challenge on the flip side, like you look back and you're like, it was a really tough at the time, but now we have a really great team that's only works on Analyst Builder. And so it's, I don't know, it's pretty great. Um, the next thing is the next challenge. And this was very, it, it used to be very difficult. It's not difficult anymore. We have a good rhythm, but uh, there's a big time difference. You guys are in Sri Lanka. I'm in the United States. It's like 11 hours difference. Oh, 10 hours. Right. So right now we're recording this at 11 o'clock, my time, like 11 a.m. For you guys, it's like 9 p.m. Yeah. So my morning is their night. And so I would either have to, we'd either have to get on a call really early in my day, which is like their afternoon, or we'd have to get on a call really late at night, my time, which is their morning. So it was exact opposite schedule, um, which at first... I would say was challenging. Would you? Would you? Would you agree? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was challenging. Um, yeah, because uh, you know having a synced call is really tough. Yes. Because uh, you know it's like ten hour difference. Yeah. It's a huge difference. So uh, we had calls like for like every two weeks, right, uh, to discuss about things, what we built, and what we're gonna do. And I think uh, for the most of the part, we we kind of understood. Like we had this, you know, mutual understanding of like, this is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. So we didn't have like too much communication, like yeah. too much stakeholder meetings you see in like in an agile process. It was like something we both knew, like yeah. we had this idea and we we both understood like uh, what to do next yeah. most of the time. So we had calls like discuss what we need to do next and what you actually want to do like for in courses, etc. But other than that, we we had like minimal meetings, and uh, it was like uh, I think the uh, the challenge was like the time difference uh, there, but still we concurred it because we understood the product mm-hmm. very well uh, in both sides, and also the uh, other part was that uh, when we are having meetings, I guess uh, it's very tough for Alex because we were basically working you know, late night. Right. So for Alex, I think it was a bit tough, tougher <laughs> than ourselves, I guess. 
I mean, I I definitely got used to it pretty quickly. It was just, it was either really early in my day or really late at night, which now I'm very used to it. It doesn't bother me at all. Like I, I think you just, again, there was a challenge at first, but as you got used to it, now it's just part of my routine. Uh, and so now it really doesn't bother me at all. And you also work pretty late, like you're a late worker. Um, and so you'd stay up really late. There'd be like 2 a.m. your time and you're still messaging me. I'm like, go to sleep. Like, <laughs> like you should not be awake right now, but you'd still be working. Actually, I work uh, late night usually. I'm a night owl. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, the team was also doing the same. Like, mm-hmm. uh, they were not doing like an eight to five job. They were like, sometimes they were like sacrificing their weekends yeah. all, on the project. Like all they wanted to see this project successful. So uh, it takes a lot to like actually do that. You know, um, I think that the time time difference and everything that all worked out really well because we had this kind of understanding yeah. between the teams and the people. And since this like a complicated project, uh, the thing was that you won't see progress like, like you see in other projects because they are like underlying work which doesn't show anything to you. Right. But it does a lot of work under the hood. When it's very important. Yeah, very important. Very tough. And uh, sometimes like in some months we didn't have like show something in the UI because we didn't have. Uh, it was doing in the back end side and a lot of things internally. But after some time you got to see the progress like going rapidly yeah. from that point. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I think uh, we concurred that with this understanding uh, between the teams and, you know, uh, yeah. uh, of the product. Yeah. Well, I think that leads into the next challenge that we had, which was just mutual trust. It's a mutual understanding that, you know, there was a time difference, there is uh, a schedule difference, you know, and so I, as you know, the person who was trying to start this was had to put a lot of trust in you uh, that one, you were going to do a good job and two, kind of like create this vision that I had for the product. But it's it, it, it puts a lot of trust in you because you guys are the one doing the vast majority of the work for building it. Now, I had some say in the design, you know, some of the ideas, but I would say the vast majority is you and your team. And so... There was a lot of trust that I had to put in you, but I'm sure there was a lot of trust that you had to put in me because like we were talking about earlier when we were talking about, um, you know, the, the funding and stuff, that is, you have to trust each other a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually it was the big, I think that's the, you know, the best part of this project. They having this mutual understanding. Uh, yeah, the thing was for Alex, I guess, that he didn't know us. Right. And also we were like... Uh, start up in early days so we didn't have like a track record for like doing you know really big stuff mm-hmm. so this was uh, you know Alex had to put to put like a lot of trust in the first message I sent yeah <laughs> that was it that was it basically that the first message the first contact we had um, he had to like put his faith on that yeah to like build this project because uh, yeah. otherwise it wouldn't happen right so I think it's one of those gut feelings, though, because like I could tell when we jumped on that first call, I was like, he really I, I could just tell that you really understood what I wanted and you were excited about it, too. You weren't just, you know, you weren't just going to do half the project and, and quit or you weren't going to, uh, you know, you know, halfway around the world. So, you, you know, I could pay you and you could not work. It's possible. So, again, it. I could tell, though, it was kind of that gut feeling. I was like, okay, this is a person that I want to work with. Um, and I usually have a pretty good instinct for that. But I also think, you know, you guys had to trust me, too, because I'm a client of yours, and, you know, you're doing a lot of work, and this is not an easy project, and so you had to trust that, um, you know, I'd fund it along the way, but then when we got to where we are now, that, you know, there would be a payoff and a reward for that as well, which, you know... It just, it just takes a lot of trust in each other. Yes. And so, you know, you can find... There are bad people out there, but I think we both got pretty... Had a good feeling for the other person. Yeah, we, we have, like, a lot of experience like that, uh, working with really complicated projects, and, you know, after some time, uh, you don't have anything at the end. Yeah. But uh, in this project, we had this trust with 
on Alex uh, into like a super high level. That it was like, as you said, it was like a gut feeling that I had also when discussing with you compare um, compared to my previous experiences that this gonna work. And also, yeah, uh, when we initially talking about the project, I was like really excited, like, okay, we're gonna do this and yeah. we're gonna build this platform, we're gonna build this remote code execution engine, and we're gonna build everything around it. And at that time, I was like really excited, and I was nonstop talking about it. <laughs> okay, this has been gonna do. This is what we're gonna do, and this is the future of the project. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, I think uh, the team also did the same, uh, but. Initially, this trusting, and after then, uh, because we had to go through like a rough time uh, with my previous company, because initially we had a different company in a different name, and uh, by the middle of this project, right? Um, mm-hmm. Not six months in. Maybe seven, seven, maybe seven, eight Maybe months seven in. months in, and uh, there was a big disaster that we had to quit. Uh, the all um, the founders, the, uh, me... Um, Kushan and Satyanga, we had to leave the previous company uh, due to a very unfortunate event. Um, and then we reached out to Alex and said, Hey, Alex, this is what happened. And currently, we don't have anything because previously we had like a legal name working there. And now we don't have anything. And mm-hmm. we're going to build a new company uh, really soon. But what are you going to do now? Because we can't force you to come with us, so you had to decide what to do next. Mm-hmm. So Alex said, wherever you guys go, I'll come. Yeah. So we started there, and uh, this, this new company is like maybe like six months old because uh, it's like the half way to the project. And Alex trusted us, yeah? Like uh, he believed in us, and that's how we got here. Uh, it, was, it was like the most challenging part, I mean, in my life, actually. Um, since uh, we spent a lot of time uh, on the previous startup and we had to leave it and I'm really happy that Alex stayed with us and uh, we worked on the project like he was mainly uh, focusing on people not the name so name or whatever you call it I definitely agree that it was more of a I, I kind of trust more I like you like I just got to know you better and so I was like, wherever Kasun's going, that's where I'm going to go. And so I didn't, I wasn't super worried about it. I think you were more worried about it than I was. Because I was just like, nah, I think it's going to work out. I, I think it's going to be okay. And then it was. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't worry about it too much. Um, so the next thing, the next challenge, um, and this wasn't a huge challenge. This was, a, I would say, a smaller challenge for us, which was finding a good product market fit. Um I know a lot of companies that have amazing products, but they have a tough time selling it because they don't know where it fits in the market. How do I, who do I target to uh, sell this product to? Who's going to use this product? Um, and I, that's what I, some of, my, of what I do in my consulting is a, a startup or some type of company will build something awesome. And I'm like, I totally see why you've built this, but Here's who you're targeting. Here's how you're marketing it. It doesn't match. It's not good. So I help with that. And with with us, I think that initially I was like, well, my audience is my market, right? I know what my audience wants and needs and what would be good for them um, for learning because that's where I was years ago. And so I think I already had a pretty good idea of a product market fit. I think what was really interesting is as we started launching it in the beta launch and in the... um, when we did the full launch, I really found a lot of what the users really wanted, which were not things that I thought of. Um, and so I kind of we kind of had to switch a little bit of like, here's how we how we do what we've already built. We've already built like 99% of it, but we have to change it a little bit to fit what they're actually wanting and telling us. That was, the, I think, the challenging part for, for us was just adapting to what they're telling us. And we're not just re- receiving it from like one or two or three people. Like this was like a hundred people were all saying the same thing, right? So that's our product market fit issue or the challenge that we had, which was we already have a good market. We have my YouTube channel and my LinkedIn and my Twitter. So we have a good group of people who would be interested. It was more about creating a product then that they really want. Um, and so, yeah, that's why, is it, was there anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, 
No, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, the next challenge, uh, I would say, is time management. Our, we initially estimated it would take about six months to build. Now, a lot of these issues that we've already talked about were issues that caused it to be longer. Um, so, But we initially estimated for six months, and it took 12 months. So almost a, it took a little over a full year to get to beta launch from when we first started talking to when we uh, uh, we actually launched the product. And so, uh, what was your like? What was your feeling on time management uh, and kind of getting it done, but also doing a really good job? Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, also like uh, we designed the we redesigned everything halfway through. That uh, we thought that initially it was. Fine. It was fine. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it wasn't bad. But uh, when we like halfway through, we thought that this is good for you know this time of year. Like mm-hmm. at that time, it was a good design and stuff. But what about uh, a year after? Like right. we need to have it like in a really unique and solid way. So we thought we told Alex, "Hey, Alex, uh, what we be we doing is." good but i said that this is not what i want actually right. i i think we can do some redesign um, of everything and uh, <laughs> of, <just> everything. <laughs> yeah, of everything everything and, <laughs> and make it like look much more you know solid yeah um, for the people who can so alex said that okay let's go for it and it took us some time to like you know design everything from scratch we mm-hmm. design change in the fonts like everything so it took some time and uh, actually that took some like uh, some of these uh, from initial estimate to the 12 months that uh, it almost doubled it and also the other factor i think it is coming from my side uh, this this other factor that i'm i'm more concerning about the quality of the product yeah. uh, the code and etc so I try to like, you know, like even someone doing something, I'm trying to like uh, make it kind of perfect right? up to some point. Mm-hmm. So it took some time to like uh, to get there. <laughs> That's a good point. I think the quality, the quality piece was uh, the biggest, one of the bigger challenges because you know how something should work. And so if it's not working just right, you're like, I got to figure this out. And so because of that... Th- and this was something that we did battle sometimes on. I was like, I was like, Kasun, it's good enough. Like, just we gotta push it. And you're like, no, 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 we gotta do this. And sometimes I would agree, sometimes I would disagree. That was a challenge. I not, it's not even on our list, but that is, we did a, we did disagree sometimes on some things yeah. where I was like, where you were like, no, we really should make this change. And I was like, we're not doing it. Or I'd be like, all right, let's do it. So the the challenge was is really you have a certain quality that you want to go for. Um, and because of that, that takes time. And the, the the six months was like, if everything went really well, but then we had to do the redesign and not just the front end, but also a lot of the architecture for scaling, right? So we, uh, we really wanted it to scale much better with a higher usage. So moving into AWS, and we'll talk about that in the infrastructure video a lot, a lot of when we started moving over to AWS, Figuring that out with the remote code execution engine, how that all pieces together, that took a while. That took several months, I would say, just getting the AWS piece because it's very complicated. But that those changes and those the quality issues, not even issue, it's just that we, we, we wanted to have a certain type of quality because I have seen other people on YouTube, and I'm not going to call anybody out, but I've seen other people on YouTube, um, on LinkedIn, or other people create courses, create products, and I looked at it and I'm like, it's not good. It's like half done, it's it's not a great quality. And that was the last thing that I wanted. I didn't wanna be like everybody else and do a half good job and charge a lot of money. I wanted to do an amazing job and charge less money. And so now I look at other people's products and I'm like, they're charging double what we're charging and they're worse. So it, I feel really good about, you know, that. as, as a side note, I, I never charged money for anything before. And so this is the first time where I'm like, I'm creating something that I'm selling or or offering to people. And so it makes me feel good knowing that we have such a good quality and we built it so, even though it took longer, 
we it, it we built such to such a good quality and standard that now when I sell, when I tell people about it, I don't feel bad because I'm like, you guys are getting something that's better than other things and it's cheaper. And so I I almost I mean it's not the same, but I'm like, if you were gonna spend a hundred dollars there, you could spend a hundred dollars here and get way more and better quality. So I feel good that that's something we went back and changed. I feel good about it. I don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, and also one one factor was that initially we had like a you know a rough idea, mm-hmm. like we we wanted something like like do the remote code execution and put courses around, but halfway through we figured out something need to be changed at some points. We need to do some things in very certain ways. So it it kept this requirement was changing mm-hmm. uh, all the time. Like initially we had a very different idea of the product. And what we built was totally different than what we had in early days. Right. So it took some time to like, sometimes we had to like do some redesign in the backend architecture also to facilitate that. But I think we did the, you know, that was a great balance mm-hmm. yeah, that we figured out because now the features you love uh, were made by that particular process. Right. That uh, going back and forth and talking about this. We can do it in this way or that way. What should we do? So it took some time to us to like figure out how this product should look like uh, right. when we're going to launch. And yeah, it also took some time. And also we had to face these challenges with my previous company collapsing and a lot of things happened at, during this one year. <laughs> yes. uh, so this, this everything contributed that, that uh, it took like this much. Yeah. And uh, but uh, overall, I guess uh, the 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 requirements they were actually very different now that we have like a, now we have know the I mean right. now we know what people want and yeah. what we want to build. But like a year ago, it was just us. Right. We were talking. Okay, this is what people gonna like. Right. And after some time, when we like actually build it. We kind of feel may yeah it may not be the one actually we might want to change it a little bit mm-hmm. so we kept doing that and um, there were like a lot of things we we tweaked along the way uh, to get to here and I think that's what people loved about yeah. it that these changes that we do and if we like initially that like, released our initial version I, I guess we wouldn't get that much of feedbacks Mm -hmm. but the tweaks we did uh, with talking with you and talking with other people about what you think of this and that make uh, made us like build a better quality product yeah so yeah it uh, uh, that's the reason i guess to have this time frame and uh, it paid off really well after we launched yeah we could feel it uh, because um, of the feedback we right. got like from the day one even with the bugs yeah. we had yeah. um, the people were like damn this is so good <laughs> yeah it's super good But and, and this is just a side note and I love my wife very much I just want to preface this but it was funny because we were talking the other day and I was like you know me I was okay with it taking longer because I know how difficult it is and I also understand why it's going to take longer like it all made sense to me but then I would try to tell like my wife <laughs> and then she'd be like, why is it taking longer? Why do you have to make these changes? That doesn't make sense because it's just, you know, she isn't in the coding world. She doesn't, that's, this isn't her area. And so, um, the time management was not just with them is also with my wife trying to like manage expectations and like, well, it's going to take two, three months longer. It's going to be a little bit longer than we hoped. Uh, initially we were hoping for like early 2023 and then it was, you know, middle of 2023 and then we launched in october for the beta so it took longer than anticipated uh, and so i managed expectation that the time management with you guys and then also with my wife <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but then also i think a lot of what we were just talking about look goes into this last point uh which is trying to be different than competitors because i when i was learning i used a i've used a ton of products i'm not going to name all of them because there's so many and i learned a ton from each of them in a different way and so there are a lot of competitors to Analyst Builder who do pieces, bits and pieces of what we do. I think um, the not the I it definitely is a challenge, but you try to be unique and you try to be different than the competitors, but you also want it to be better. And so it's really challenging to do all of those at the same time. And so I think what also the product market fit ties into this a little bit, but what we were trying to do is I didn't just want to do courses. 
I told you, I was like, I don't just want to do courses. If we're just going to do courses, I'll put it on Udemy, yeah. right? And then it'll be fine. I'll be happy about it, but I won't feel as good about it because um, there were other things that I wanted. And then I was like, I really want these questions because I failed many technical interviews and I, I used different products and I just, they weren't as helpful as I had hoped. And so I was like, I want to do these technical questions, have a remote code execution engine, but also bring that into the courses that not almost any other, there are very few platforms that have it. Now, again, there are competitors that, that do, but ours is focused very much on analytics where theirs could be a lot of different things and it's not just analytics. And so, um, how would you say that it was challenging designing it and creating it when you can look at the competitors, you know what they are and what they do, but also trying to make it unique and different that's better than what they already currently have? Yeah, so if you look at the competitors we had, they were like really old, like growing business for like years. Like I seven guess. to 10 years. Seven to 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, and also like the biggest challenge was to like figuring things out. Like, uh, you know that, uh, it's like a actually complicated system. Uh, it's not just coding. You had to do like better architectures at this, like uh, how to connect these small pieces together. So actually we had to think very thoroughly about this project, mm -hmm. uh, like how we can actually get this thing done with very less experience than other competitors. And since this was not an easy project because you know executing remote code in a secure way is a really tough thing mm -hmm. really tough thing to do so we had to figure these things out from scratch right. from the first principles and also as alex said the product is very different than others that it is very like integrated and it is very focused on to you know learning and understanding concepts that's where questions comes in right so we had to like think of this from the beginning, uh, like how we need to tackle this. And uh, yeah, we have looked at competitors and understood what they do their best and what is not very good. And so we had like, had like um, think of everything. There's a lot of research. A lot of research. A lot of, I mean, that's actually maybe is a challenge in and of itself, which is throughout that year, we did an immense amount of research. I mean, you on the architecture side and some other things, but, you know, we both worked a lot on research. Yeah. <laughs> we were always looking, we were like, well, you know, here's what a competitor does. It's very similar to us, but how do we make ours unique and different? Um, and we can't see how they do things. Yeah. So like in the architecture, in our next video on the architecture, we cannot, we have no idea how they do things on their back end. So we're not trying to replicate what they're doing. We're trying to do it the best way possible. So that in and of itself was another challenge is knowing that they are doing something, we can see it and we're like, okay, that's good how they're doing it, but how do we do it better, faster, um, better for scaling? Because we knew that this would be a good product once we launched it. And so, yeah, so the, just um, being unique and different from the competitors, that's tough. It's very tough because there's a lot of different products out there for courses or some for running code, but more courses side. So just trying to be unique and different, very challenging. Yes. <laughs> very, very challenging. Very challenging. Um, so I think that's a good place to stop because in our next video, we're going to go into the infrastructure of Analyst Builder, which I think is going to be super exciting because this was, <laughs> it's just very, very complex. Um, and we'll talk a lot about our tech stack and the, um, you know, how we built it, which is super unique. I think it's gonna be really, really interesting to hear about and learn about. Um, I feel like I could I could be like a full stack engineer right now. <laughs> I learned so much. I just as like throughout the throughout the year I've been I've looked at so many new things, tried so many things and seen so many things. I was like, I need to join your team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but all right, so we're gonna finish up this one. I appreciate you guys watching. This is the second video in the series. Uh, in the next one, we'll talk all about the architecture. Let me start this. You ready? Okay. okay. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to... Oh, let me retry. <laughs> it, it takes me like four or five times sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We can go on to the next one. Because <laughs> that, one, that one is... Um, 
Morming. Yeah. My cat's trying to come in now. Hey, get out of here. Tss, get out of here. <laughs> She's looking right at you. I'll cut that out, don't worry. Tss, you hey. can put that as a blooper, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a blooper at the end. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Nailed it. All right, let's go on. Next one is the best one, I guess.